Hello, and welcome to Keeping Your Online Account Safe, a hacker's insight into password security. There have been a few high-profile breaches circulating in the news lately, and they've shed some light on some habits that we as users might have picked up over the years that put us at risk. I was preparing a talk on password security at my office, and after discussing the subject with some friends and family, I decided it would be prudent and useful uh, to provide a talk for companies public consumption as well. But wait, who the heck am I and, and why does what I think matter? Well, I'm Derek Rook, a security engineer and sometimes consultant. I've been in IT for 15 years. I started as a web developer and then moved on to do everything from help desk to network and systems administration. I made the switch to security about five years ago and am certified in intrusion analysis, network forensics, uh, incident response, and penetration testing, which is just a fancy term for good guy hacking. Uh, something a little different about my security awareness talks is that I like to give insight in how the attackers are taking advantage of our security flaws. I think that it's important to know what we're protecting against in order to provide the best defense against those attacks. So today we're going to talk a little about the subject of cracking passwords. Uh, first some housekeeping things. Uh, disclaimer right off the bat, this is not an in-depth talk. We're going to be exploring uh, some pretty complex and deep subjects, and in the interest of keeping things moving and being able to appeal to a wider audience, I'm not going to be delving into the minutia of different theories and mathematical formulas. The intention here is to provide insight into the reasoning behind best practices, not to teach password cracking to penetration testers. On the flip side of that, if something does start to go over your head, please just bear with me. We won't be staying in the weeds for very long, and I should be providing context for the technicalities shortly after I pre present them. All right, in order to talk about password cracking, there's some terms that you'll need to know. Um, hashing is the mathematical operation to identify data without knowing its actual value. Basically what that means is that given arbitrary data, let's say a password, uh, a hashing algorithm's goal is to compute that data into a unique string of characters. That means that if I hash the word dog and then I hash the word cat, those two hashes should be different. Hashing is also a one-way operation, meaning that you can hash data into a hash, but you can't unhash a hash back into data. And this makes it ideal for passwords because the system doesn't need to know what the password is in order to check if your password's correct. And I'll be demonstrating kind of how that works in a few minutes. Uh, the next term is credentials, which is just something used for authentication. Basically, it uh, refers to whatever you use to log into a system. Generally, it's a username and password. Uh, but for instance, if you own an iPhone or an iPad or even a modern Android, uh, your thumbprint or fingerprint could be considered credentials for that device. And then the last term is breach. Um, this is used to refer to an event of a system or website security being compromised and data being removed. Obviously, it's a fairly straightforward term, but it's important to know specifically how we're using it in the information security world. Now, let's give a little background on how password attacks take place. Uh, you might hear or read about attackers cracking passwords or stealing people's credentials, uh, but how does that even happen? Well, usually when an attacker breaches a company or website, they have various goals in mind, ranging from data destruction to stealing trade secrets. But one thing they usually always try and get is a dump of usernames and passwords. These lists are valuable as they allow attackers to impersonate the users either on the system that they breached or possibly other systems that those users might have an account on. Uh, this list, these lists are so valuable, in fact, that they often get traded or sold on the internet. The good news is that if the site is using security best practices, your password should be hashed so that the attacker doesn't actually know what your, your real password is. They just have a list of hashes. Password cracking is the act of determining your password based on those hashes. Finally, let's, let's talk a little bit about how that process works. Generally, password cracking works like this. You figure out what your guess is going to be and you hash that guess. 
Then you compare your guess hash against the hash that you're trying to crack. If it's the same, then you crack the password. If it's different, you try a new guess. If you remember, hashing is a one-way operation, so attackers can't just unhash the list and find the password. That's why they have to hash their guess and then compare it. Um, now, there are two primary methods of determining the guess mentioned in that first box. The first one is called brute, a brute force attack. Basically what it does is try and guess every possible combination of characters until it finds the exact combination of characters that matches your password. It'll do something like start with A, then AA, AAA, BAA, and so on. This method will eventually crack any password put in front of it, but it could take a very long time depending on how good the password is and the speed of the computer. Uh, we'll put that length of time into context in a few slides. The second common method is called a dictionary attack. Basically, it uses a list of possible passwords using each line as a guess for a, the password until it reaches the end of the list. While this method won't crack a password that isn't on the list, if the password is on the list, uh, then it will produce results much faster than a brute force attack since it's not wasting time with random characters in between guesses. Dictionary attacks basically live and die based on the quality of that word list. So let's talk a minute about speed. Uh, when we talk about password cracking, it's important to know how fast this actually happens. The speed is basically determined by how quickly your computer can complete the mathematical calculations needed to convert a password into a hash. Uh, let's put that into context. My laptop is a 2014 MacBook Pro, uh, which is a fairly respectable machine when it comes to performance. The central processing unit or CPU in that laptop can calculate tens of millions of hashes per second. Uh, that means it's, it's capable of making around tens of millions of guesses uh, every second. In contrast, video cards uh, used for computer gaming and a few other applications are really good at calculating hashes. My four-year-old graphics card averages around seven billion hashes per second. And I have two of those in my old gaming computer, so it's capable of generating around 14 billion guesses per second. Now, there are such a thing as purpose-built password cracking machines, and modern ones can are capable of making trillions, many trillions of guesses per second. We'll get back to those numbers and what they actually mean for us as users in a few slides, but first let's talk a little bit about password complexity and how IT professionals quantify those passwords. When we talk about password complexity, there's various mathematical ways to quantify exactly how complex a password is and how long it will take to crack a password given various methods. Uh, all of those methods are extremely complex and beyond the scope of this talk, and quite honestly, most of them are way over my head. Um, but to provide uh, context for this talk, we're, there's a fairly basic formula that we can use just to give us some comparison between passwords. What you do is you take the number of characters in your character set and raise it to the power of the number of characters in your password. As an example, imagine a computer is trying to brute force our password, and our password is ZZZZ, and they're starting at AAAA. Uh, we can calculate the number of possible uh, character combinations. There are using an alphabet of 26 lowercase characters uh, for, a char for a four character long password. And that means that we take 26, the number of characters in our character set, and raise it to the power of four, the length of the password. In this case, there's just under 457,000 possible combinations, and the computer needs to calculate each one before it finds our password. So with that sorted, uh, let's review a couple of tactics that us IT guys have used to try and enforce good passwords in our environments over the years. Now, I'm sure that anyone who has used a computer at work sometime in the last 10 years has been the victim of IT guys yelling at them to make ridiculously hard to memorize passwords. And we apologize that, uh, we really do. Uh, we all make mistakes and hopefully you're just gonna be able to forgive us for that one. It was just terrible advice. Um, what we were trying to do was increase the character set, uh, make the character have to calculate more characters per character slot. Uh, there were various reasons for that, and some of them were decent reasons, but it, in the end it was just short-sighted of us. Um, 
as increasing the exponent is way more efficient way of increasing the end result. But since we're here for context, let's go ahead and take a look at um, a small complex password for comparison's sake. Uh, using the formula from the previous slide, the password here is using a character set of 95, which is made up of 26 lowercase characters, 26 uppercase characters, 10 numbers, and 33 special characters. This is a fairly common uh, character set for modern passwords. The password also happens to be eight characters long. This gives us a total of around 6.6 .6 quadrillion possible combinations that the computer would need to calculate in a brute force attack. So let's compare that to a newer methodology. Long passwords have become increasingly popular with security departments lately. I'm sure you've noticed that minimum number of characters has been slowly increased on you over the years. As demonstrated by this XKCD comic, it turns out that long passwords are much easier for humans to remember and much harder for computers to calculate. That's because we're increasing the exponent in our formula rather than the base number. Using just a character set of 26, you can achieve a possible, uh, a possible combination total of two with 25 zeros after it. Uh, and that number is called septillion. So if you start with million, then billion, then trillion, and you do that seven times, that's septillion. Uh, it's, it's just a monstrous number. And to get a clearer picture, let's take a look at those numbers side by side. So it's clear, just by even by looking at it, these numbers are in completely different leagues. Uh, using the rough, cracking, uh, rough numbers on cracking speed of my gaming computer from a few slides ago, uh, the so-called complex password could be brute forced in just five and a half days, whereas the longer, simpler password would take 452 trillion millennia, and a millennia is a thousand years. So that's just a staggering amount of time. And with that we should be done right I and mean, no one's going to take that long and sit around that long or physically can sit around that long just to crack a single password so we're all set right okay. unfortunately it's not that simple attackers are always looking to gain a leg up and have found ways to craft word lists that get uh, very good at guessing what your password could be if you recall from earlier slides, dictionary attacks end up being significantly faster than brute force attacks if your password is on that word list. So let's take a, take a look at some methods that attackers use to generate powerful word lists. If you'll remember, I said that I like to use the attacker's methods to inform our defenses. The reason is they're using our defenses to inform their attacks. Uh, the attackers look at the things that we do to defend ourselves and find the flaw in them. What we need to do is take a look at the way they attack our defenses and find the flaw in that or find the the weakness in it. So here's here's a few things that they look at uh, and find flaws in with us. So uh, as minimum length password requirements have grown, uh, people have been looking towards movie, book, and song quotes to provide long, easy to memorize passphrases. Um, another trick is to use something related to the system we're logging into, something about our work or something about Facebook, whatever helps spark our memory so that so we can memorize or recall all of these passwords that we're forced to use. Another thing that people do is substitute characters uh, with lookalike characters. An E becomes a three or an A becomes an at symbol, things like that. And the last thing that people do is once they come up with an incredibly long, complex passphrase and memorize it, they use it literally everywhere. We put in the effort, we should be rewarded by being able to use it, and it's long and complex, so we're safe where we use it too. Well, let's take a look at some of the ways that attackers counter these tactics. Attackers have developed tools that can look through websites, movie scripts, book manuscripts, and song lyric databases to generate massive word lists containing uh, phrases and lines and groups of words that we might use as an easy to remember password. Uh, if they're looking to crack passwords obtained in a breach of your company, they may crawl your company's website to add words that relate directly to you and your job to their word lists. Uh, have you ever tailored your password to the site or service that it's being used for? Well, attackers have thought of that and are using that habit against you. Well, what about replacing letters with numbers and punctuation that look similar? Or adding punctu punctuation to the beginning or the end of the word. Uh, that's clear, it makes it clearly not a real word and it shouldn't be on their word list because it's not in the dictionary. Well, attackers have thought of that too, 
uh, word lists are not dictionaries, uh, at least not anymore. They used to be, but now they're just literally a, a list of, uh, you know, different sets of words or different sets of characters. Uh, they have programs that go through their word lists and use rules to add permutations of every entry. Um, I have several rules uh, for engagements that I work on that add possible birth years and current year to the end of all of the words on my word list, as those are common things that users put on the end of their password to make them more complicated. Uh, other rules are, you know, character substitution or uh, things like taking a word and then adding the word again backwards immediately after that. That's another common thing that people do to make good passwords. So uh, these tricky little things that we come up with, little rules. Basically, if we come up with a rule to do it, uh, they can come up with a rule to replicate it. And so that's something that we kind of need to stay away from. Uh, what about reusing their super secure password? Uh, this is actually the worst habit of them all. Everyone does this. Even I was guilty of this for, uh, for a time. And it's insidious how convenient it is and how we as creatures of habit gravitate toward this habit. Here's the problem. Remember when I said credential lists were traded and sold online? Well, you better believe every time a new credential dump gets released, those dumps get cracked and then added to those people's word lists, making it easy to crack other places. Uh, but worse than that, and the real reason this is bad, or at least the, the, like, the extra worse reason this is bad, is because the attackers know that users reuse passwords. You, you, you need to know that if you uh, if they have your username and password, they're going to be trying it everywhere. Uh, do you trust sites like LinkedIn and Tumblr with your bank account? Well, if you're using the same password in all three of those places, then you are trusting them inherently. You're trusting their security to be as good or better than your bank's. Your social club's forum or that review site that you frequent may not seem important until that password uh, that was stolen from there helps the attacker drain your bank account and steal all of your personal photos you backed up to your cloud account. I cannot stress enough how important it is to not reuse passwords. It is one of the most concerning things in user security right now. So that's a lot of doom and gloom. Uh, we got super, super deep a minute ago and, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you. We should still be friends. Um, the attackers have thought of everything. Uh, so we should just pack it in, throw away our computers and just go back to, to living in caves, right? Well, not exactly. Uh, there are some things that we can do to make their jobs harder and uh, make our online identities a little safer. So what are those things? Uh, what I like to do in a, in a thing, one of my little tricks is I like to make a passphrase describing a character or object in a book, movie, or song. Uh, don't pick your favorite book or character, uh, just one that you like. Uh, but what's important is that you make that description in your own words. This is not, you are not getting a quote. You are not, um, you know, using a song lyric or line. You're using your own words to describe something. And that makes it very difficult for an attacker to make a program that can guess those specific combinations of words because it's coming out of your brain, uh, and they can't read your brain yet. Um, Another thing is don't rely on simple substitutions make, to make your pass, uh, phrase secure. Uh, you can use substitutions to help make it secure, but it's not, it can't be the only thing doing so. Uh, the next thing is use passphrases, not passwords. And a lot of people use those interchangeably and you can because password is just something that you type in. Uh, but passphrase is distinct because you use multiple words to do it. And also, they're inherently more complex because generally you include spaces or punctuation into those, uh, which increases the character set involved in your passphrase. Uh, another trick, and this is super important, uh, is enabling two-factor authentication. Um, this can help keep your account secure even during a breach. Uh, most sites allow you, use, you to use an app like Google Authenticator to generate an, an additional code when logging in. Uh, or you can have it send you a text message to confirm that it's you that just logged in. Uh, enable this in every site that allows it. It's usually in your security or privacy settings. Uh, major sites like Twitter, Facebook, PayPal, 
uh, hopefully most banks, all hopefully all banks, but I know most banks will, uh, enable it wherever you can. Um, this is a pretty big topic and I might be able to just do a webcast on it alone. But for now, you know, look for it on your sites. Uh, some other people have some YouTube videos explaining it, so you can maybe look at those as well. Uh, and then, as mentioned in a couple slides ago, never, ever, ever, ever reuse your passwords. And I cannot put enough evers in there. Do not reuse your passwords. That can get, uh, it can get ugly trying to remember all those different passwords. Uh, and I understand that. So there are services and programs out there called credential managers that help you um, keep track of all these uh, crazy sites, uh, all, all these like hundreds of passwords that we would have to remember if we used a different one for every site. Uh, three of the top ones, uh, LastPass, 1Password, and KeyPass are all good. Um, find one that you like and use it and make sure that you use it to be able to use a different password in every site. Um, credential managers is another vast subject uh, with a lot of questions behind it for the average computer user and I think that might be the subject of my next webcast. Uh, as I am actually putting together another talk for my office uh, just about credential managers. That's how important they are. I want, I want all of you to be using them. I use them. My wife uses them. Everyone, everyone I love hopefully uses them and hopefully you guys will too. Uh, cause it's, it's one of the best ways to keep yourself safe. So hopefully you learned something from this video. Uh, if you did, please share it with your friends and family. The goal here is to help everyone stay safe online. And the more people that are educated on these basic techniques and some of the pitfalls that we run into, the better. Um, as I said before, I have two ideas for follow-up webcasts on uh, credential managers and two-factor authentication. So keep your eyes open for those over the coming weeks. Uh, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, uh, feel free to either visit the comment section on YouTube, or you can reach out to me on Twitter at underscore R00K underscore. Thank you.